Algebra 1, number 2.4b. We're talking about subtracting rational numbers. And now we're going to subtract numbers without a number line, just using the rules. So we can subtract rational numbers by adding the opposite. 5 take away 2 and 5 plus a negative 2 are the same. If we take away a positive 2 or add a negative 2, we're doing the same thing. The definition of subtraction says for all rational numbers, a and b, the difference, a minus b, is equal to a plus a negative b. See? We've got a, and we're taking away a positive b, is the same thing as a plus a negative b. So for 5 minus 2, the inverse, the opposite of taking away a positive 2, would be adding a negative 2. See? This is taking away a positive 2. Now we add a negative 2. Either way, it's going to equal a 3. When we subtract rational numbers, we add the opposite. So it's really important that you remember subtracting is adding the opposite. Okay? Subtracting is adding the opposite. So when we have 7 take away 3 equals 4, and 7 take away 3 equals 4 with the 3 in parentheses, it's the same thing with or without the parentheses. This is the same equation, okay? We're just putting this 3 inside of parentheses to show you it's a positive 3, okay? So we can subtract a positive, like 7 take away this positive 3, and get a 4. Or we could add the opposite. The opposite of a positive 3 is a negative 3, so we'll add a negative 3. We still get a 4. We could subtract a positive, like 6 taking away a positive 10, and that's going to get us to a negative 4 on the number line. And we could add the opposite. Instead of taking away a positive 10, we can add a negative 10. That's still going to get us to a negative 4. When we have negative 3.7 and we're taking away a positive 2, we're going more negative. It's going to equal negative 5.7. We can also add the opposite and do 3.7 plus a negative 2. See? Instead of taking away a positive 1, we add a negative 1. It's adding the opposite. That's going to get us to negative 5.7. If we have negative 5 eighths and we're taking away a positive 3 eighths, we're subtracting a positive, or it's going to, and see how it equals negative 8 eighths, which is going to be a negative 1 because the numerator and denominator are the same. Or it's the same thing as if we add the opposite, and instead of taking away a positive 3 eighths, we add a negative 3 eighths. And that's going to get us negative 8 eighths, which is negative 1. Same thing. If we have a negative 12 and we take away a negative 4, this is the inverse of the inverse, isn't it? Remember that video we we made and you I made and you watched? So taking away, if we have a negative 12 and we take away a negative 4, it's going to equal a negative 8. It's the same thing as having a negative 12 and adding 4. We're still going to have negative 8. It's going to go closer towards the 0. That's adding the opposite. Now if you don't know what the inverse of an inverse is, which is instead of saying negative, we say this is the additive inverse of. So this is the additive inverse of a negative 4, so it's going to be a positive 4. You can see a link to the inverse of inverse video in the description of this video, okay? And that'll help you out a lot, all right? And when addition and subtraction happens several times, that could be confusing. We can use the rule for subtracting rational numbers to make them all addition. We add the opposite. So if we have 8 take away a negative 4 minus 2 minus a negative 4 plus a 2. Wow, that's a lot of negative signs, isn't it? Well, we can group these. We can group this together as an inverse of an inverse, which is going to give us a positive 4 because of the double negative right here. And this inverse of an inverse is going to give us a positive 4. So now we have 8 plus 4 plus a negative 2 plus 4 plus 2. See? We can add this 8 plus 4 to get 12, and this 4 plus 2 to get 6. Now we can use the commutative property to switch them around. We'll put the 6 up here with the 12, and we've got 12 plus 6, which is 18. Now we can do that negative 2, and 18 plus a negative 2 is 16. See? Do you see how we did that? We used the commutative property of addition to help us reorder them so that we could get the 12 and the 6 added together to make it easier for us. So just remember, the inverse of the inverse is going to turn into a positive, and we can group those all together 
right away. And if you want to, when you see a problem like this, just put a circle around the inverse of the inverse. Every time you see an inverse of an inverse, put a circle around them like that, where it's got the two negatives and the parentheses, and you'll know it's a plus sign. Then you can group them and see them very easily, okay? So let's do this again. We've got negative 4 minus a negative 2x plus x minus a negative 5. So I see inverses of inverses here, don't you? So there's a plus 2x and there's a plus 5, see? So we've got negative 4 plus 2x plus x plus 5. Now we can change the order with commutative property of addition, and we'll just take this negative 4 and we'll put it back here behind the 5. Now we've got them grouped together with 2x plus x right here plus 5 minus 4. Well, we just collect the like terms. We combine like terms. 2x plus x is 3x, and 5 take away 4 is 1. Our answer is 3x plus 1. We can't solve it any more than that. That's as far as it goes, okay, because we don't know what x is. So our answer is 3x plus 1. Now, if this is still very confusing and you want to see some rules to subtract integers in a video for more help, I've got a 6th grade video that is probably explained a little easier, and the link is in this description. There's going to be two links in this description, one for the rules to subtract integers from 6th grade and one for the inverse of inverse, okay? And hopefully those will help you, all right? So that's how to subtract rational numbers using rules. And what we're going to talk about in 2.4c is subtracting rational numbers when we have brackets and braces. All right? I'll show you what to do. I'll see you there. Bye.